so tell me why you're here today. We're here today because the Irvington Town Council is considering, or we think they're considering, a resolution that would begin, uh, well, it would be the next step in a process towards moving a, a local principal reduction strategy here in Irvington that would help under, write down underwater mortgages, people who owe more than they're worth. So what's what's the situation here in uh, Irvington? The situation in here in Irvington is desperate. Um, this foreclosure crisis has taken almost 2,000 homes in this so city, far in this township so far, with many, 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 many more in the pipeline. And what's happened when people are foreclosed? They, I mean, it destroys families, it destroys lives, and so there are 600 and. 20 some odd vacant abandoned properties. Those are properties that sit empty and they're subject to blight. They bring property values down and so it's like this cancer that spreads. So we've been waiting for a federal, we've been waiting for state response to this crisis and it's been there but it's been completely insufficient to the needs of these communities that have been so hardest hit. So we have a solution now that's a local solution that leaves it, puts it back in the hands of elected officials who have to look homeowners in the eyes and see their struggle, and they can do it. They can choose to uh, be brave uh, and implement a very controversial strategy that Wall Street hates, but that takes back some of that control and stabilizes communities. But let, let's go back a little bit. You have six over 600 homes that are vacant now. How did this home become vacant? Well, this community particularly was targeted for predatory loans, right? right. Those loans that are have adjustable rate mortgages that um, are over, they inflated the, the value of the homes to begin with. They have balloon payments on the end. All of those things that, that prey on the American dream of home ownership. So people got into these deals thinking, I'll just work overtime, or I can, we can afford it if we all chip in. But then when the economy crashed because of the housing market and people lost their jobs, people got sick, people started losing their homes. And so they, wait a minute, they couldn't pay their mortgage anymore. They couldn't pay their mortgage because it was not worth what it was. It wasn't ever worth what it was supposed right, to be. Right, but, but did the bank, who, who actually told them to leave their home? Well, the banks kicked them out. The banks kick them out. Well, and you have to understand, sometimes people go through uh, this process for years. It's right. re People are desperate for help. So the bank says, here, submit modification. So, you know, you have literally probably this much paper that you submit to them. And the bank will say, oh, we never got it. Or we didn't get this piece of it. Oh, it, it's too late. It's expired. You need to resubmit the whole package all over again. So people were trying to get a reduction in their yes. payments. A reduction in their payments, a lower interest rate, one that wasn't fixed, one that didn't have a, 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 a balloon that was going to explode at the end, and they weren't successful. And the banks just kept putting people through the ringer over and over and over. And so, yeah, some people walked away. So people got actually evicted from their homes? Many people did. I think more, more people just uh, left. left. Why did they leave? Because they couldn't fight anymore. Because they didn't have any hope. Because there wasn't... Because this crisis, people think it's my fault, right? right. They think, oh, you know, like it's debt. We don't talk about debt in our culture. And so what we're doing right now with building this movement, this policy is one way, but we're building a movement of homeowners to talk to each other and to say, yeah, I'm underwater in my mortgage and I can't pay it. And it's not my fault. I was targeted for a predatory loan. I want to pay a mortgage. I can afford to pay a mortgage. I just need a fair deal. And this bank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, you name them, they're not negotiating in good faith. And, and we're building this movement of homeowners that demands they do that finally. So somebody, you or people who wanted another program went to City Hall and tell me what happened. Uh, well, how did this come about, this new program that you're trying to well, push for? I work with an organization that's part of a national, uh, a national coalition that uh, is working on this particular policy of using eminent domain to force banks to write down underwater mortgages locked in PLS, private label security trust. They're very specific. There's maybe 10% of all mortgages in the country are locked in these trusts, but they're the, mo they're the worst of the worst. So nationally, we started a conversation and we started approaching as community groups, 
social justice, economic justice groups. We started approaching elected officials in different places and we got a receptive here, here, here in Irvington, also in Newark, also in East Orange. And so we've been moving this process forward ever since. And the goal is to do what? The goal is to, we have a list of 199 mortgages that are private label securities here in Irvington that are on the verge, right? People are like this. Right. And they're either, they're, they may be current, they may be in foreclosure, they may be in default. Right. But those are the mortgages that uh, this policy would get to. So the purpose of this is, is to do this outreach with the community to get the support so that elected officials can be brave and stand up to all. And then what, their, their mortgage would go down? What would happen? A principal reduction. By how much? low interest rate to fair market value. So let's say somebody owes 300,000 on their mortgage and now it's worth uh, 150. The so home is worth 150. The home is worth 150. Right. So the idea is to condemn that toxic overvalued um, right. you know predatory loan, write it down to fair market value, forgive the $150,000 in debt and then give it back to sell it back to the homeowner at a at a mortgage monthly payment they can afford. So you came and who made, who made the resolution? You said there was a resolution? Right. We initially had a resolution last July uh, with Irvington Town Hall and we as a coalition of activists put the resolution together which Town Hall, Town Council passed unanimously. Right. And then we started working with the mayor. And, and the resolution was to... The resolution very clearly last July said the township must use eminent domain as a tool for principal reduction. Okay. Very clear. It was passed. Uh, it was passed unanimously last July. Okay. So here we are. Uh, Six, eight months. Eight months later. <laughs> and now they're digging in their heels. This resolution was put forward, was written by uh, an attorney working with the township in a, a, a redevelopment con um, context, right? right? Looking at these mortgages as a way because we can see how blight and foreclosures and empty homes really they're connected and right. so the redevelopment idea is how is how we're approaching this so, so you say somebody d is digging their heels who is that there are several council people who are digging in their heels they changed their mind they've one okay. of them changed their minds right well they must have all because they all passed this unanimously in july last year right so now we have four who are supposedly on board with us, and, right. um, and then out three of, out of seven. Right. So we have enough votes to pass it if those four. And stay now you're, you're now this is a new resolution, it which is, is a new resolution. It's to more do, detailed. Yeah. Okay. Which which uh, which asks for what? So it's even like this essentially just says to the 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 council to the administration do a study. Right. That you can present to the planning board so that they can take the next steps in the redu in, in the development process, the redevelopment process. Okay. So it's not even a commitment to using eminent domain right now. It's just exploring these specific 199 properties to see how it might, how we might be able to go about doing this in a in a transparent, ethical. Um, uh, and and open way with the with the people and the community who are directly impacted by it. That's where my role is. I'm the community um, organizer. That's why all of these folks are here. And how many people do you have uh, that are part of you, of your movement now at this point? In who Irvington, I mean, between in Essex County, we have hundreds. Okay. Um, and what happens here impacts people all over Essex County and all over the country. So um, this is the most advanced uh, you've gone so far in Irvington. Yes. You haven't gone to that in Newark or no. East Orange or no, all these places. Not yet. Not it takes a it takes a long time. It and then uh, so there's a rumor that the banks are gonna come or their representatives, their lawyers, to actually oppose They've uh, been here. this. They've been here before. Yeah, we ran them out. SIFMA is the um, is the industry lobbying group that okay. represents Wells Fargo, the big investment uh, mortgage backed securities group firms. Who got us into this mess? So, so, so what's the argument? Them. Those those homes are empty and they're not being sold. And um... well, the argument is that uh, that it's a moral hazard, right? That if you write down uh, on mass principles on on mortgages, then it's going to encourage other homeowners to do what? Right. I don't even know. But the truth is, to the moral... not pay their mortgage. Right. But the truth is, the moral hazard right. rests with the criminals who got us into this crisis. Right. And the moral hazard is that they're getting away with it without being any being held accountable at all criminally for what they've done. 
But so. if, if they've, if they have sort of repossessed those homes, they own those homes, what, what's, uh, I mean, uh, a they home is in foreclosure, what, what, who owns the, the home? Well, they don't own the home until the name is off the deed, and the name comes off the deed when there's a sheriff sale. So people who have already gone to sheriff sale, un unfortunately, like, they're, right. they're, it's too late. But even people who are in foreclosure, I just worked with the okay. homeowner, mm -hmm. um, with what, working with Wells Fargo, three years in this fight. She had a sheriff sale scheduled for today. Uh, we started a public campaign uh, to the CEO of Wells Fargo demanding that, that he work with her and, and negotiate in good faith, stop the sheriff's sale and keep this family in their home. And last week they came to the table with an offer that the family accepted and they're staying in their home. Okay, so and that was in Irvington? Late. That was right here in Irvington, right around the corner. Okay, and who was that woman? It was Lavinia Curry and her daughter Paulette McQueen. And this community rallied So they basically them. reduced her mortgage. They did. They okay. they gave her uh, they did give her a principal reduction. I can't go into the details right. of the of the terms, but they they did give her a very good deal that So they it looks like they're ready to do it for special cases, but they don't want to do a um, a systematic reduction, right? We have to keep up the pressure. And the message that this would send this policy would send to Wells Fargo who really they I have a list of a hundred properties in foreclosure just with Wells Fargo mm -hmm. alone. And that's not even people in default, it's people currently in foreclosure dealing with Wells Fargo. They're bad actors here in Irvington. Mm -hmm. So it would send a very clear message to them that uh, they're on notice, that they need to start negotiating with these folks in good faith or the township's going to make them do it. But somebody, some people would say, well, you know, uh, if you owe that much money, uh, then the bank loaned you the money, then um, then the bank would be losing money if you don't pay it back. What would you respond to that? My response is they've been paid multiple times over. We bailed them out as taxpayers when they crashed okay. the economy with TARP, right? They also probably had insurance policies on a lot of these homes that they collected money for. They've, they've, they've already all, been paid Wells for Fargo it. Wells Fargo is just the servicer. Right. They haven't lost any money. They never extended any money, any credit. So, but they're standing in court saying they have the right to foreclose and collect this money and they don't. It's, uh, there is, so much evidence of a massive fraud. We don't even know who. Has you mean the they rights. don't? They don't own the mortgage. They actually own some securities that they bought Maybe. at a. Maybe they're just servicers. They don't have any obligation. They're debt collectors. That's it. That's it. They're debt collectors on unsecuritized debt because the, there's no mortgages in the mortgage-backed securities anyway, which we, is a whole different conversation. Is this a very profitable business for the banks Extremely. at this point? It is. They're, they're bigger and badder than ever, right? They're making, they're more profitable. Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Chase, just made his biggest bonus ever. When when he was sued by by the federal government for 13 billion dollars, um, their stock prices went up. They went up. He got his biggest bonus because people know that the shareholders know that he got away with fraud and nobody's going to jail for it. So people who bank with uh, Wells Fargo, Chase, uh, Bank of America, what, what kind of, um, in, what could they do to help uh, this, this particular situation? They can know first and foremost they're not alone. I mean, alone. the people, if, if you just, yes. a, somebody who banks who don't have a problem paying your mortgage, but oh. you realize that there is some injustice be, that's being done with somebody's doing business with you. Well, what, you could, what could you, you do? You could move your money. You could find a credit union, a local-based, community-based bank that deals ethically, and you could move your money from those big institutions. Could you try to lobby within uh, that bank and and, uh, and send, you know, s you some information to the... You could, but I think we're stronger together. So we need to get involved. You know, we need to get united, and, and our voices resonate louder as a as a group than as any one person will do. Okay, thank you very much. Last night, this resolution was was debated, and it was put on the consent agenda, item number fourteen, right, on the consent agenda to be voted on this evening. And we know we have four votes on the council to vote yes and move this thing forward. I'm looking at the, rest of the, the, the agenda tonight, right now, and that agenda has our item on it on the non-consent part, which is exactly where we were two weeks ago, which is exactly what all of us showed up here to demand not happen this time. That's right. Right? right? So here we are again with our elected leaders with the power in their hands to do something meaningful to get to this foreclosure crisis in Irvington, and they're digging in their heels again, again. That's right. I have a.
I have a petition right now with two over 2,000 signatures on it, many of them from people from Irvington and Essex County, right? right? And from all over the country who are supporting elected leaders in communities just like Irvington to do this thing and do it right. And there, and, and what? I mean, this is just not going to stand. So tonight, if you are inclined to get up and have your voice heard and demand even just taking five seconds. I'm Mary, I'm from Matawan, New Jersey. I'm working in Irvington and I am demanding that, that the council vote yes on this resolution, right? Those right. are the things that we need to out, lay out for these folks. Right. They need to hear our voices and every single one of us demanding that we use this tool at our disposal finally to get to this foreclosure crisis that continues to devastate our community. So if you feel inclined, get up there and make some noise tonight. We have um, signs that we're, we're going to hold inside that say vote, that say, um, Paul has them, that say vote yes for Irvington homeowners. We should each one of them hold them up, right? And let them see what we're doing. So when we go inside at 8 o'clock, let everybody hold one of those signs that say vote yes for Irvington homeowners, right? Yes. Stand up against Wall Street. Fight back. housing bubble that we're in. What was the basic reason why it happened? Predatory mortgages. Predatory Thank mortgages. What caused, what caused the predatory mortgages? Greed. 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 They, the problem is that, you know, to say greed, you know, that's the banker's own explanation. You can't do anything with that explanation. It doesn't lead you anywhere. You have to understand how this crisis originated from the financial system itself. That there is so much money flooding United States capital markets that they don't know what to do with all of that money. And they forced it. They forced trillions into the mortgage market by systematically pumping up the mortgage market. Now, if you've got a whole house that sold eight years ago for 300000 and today it's worth one hundred and fifty, it never changed in value. It was sold for more than it was worth. There is a name for selling assets for more than they are worth. That name is... Fraud. It's fraud. It's illegal. It's illegal unless you are a bank. <laughs> Who's gone to jail for defrauding the United States homeowner market of two trillion dollars? Who's gone to jail? Nobody. So I mean, uh, it's so ridiculous. I mean, uh, they can't even run the United States right anymore. We got this wreck of a health care system. Uh, we got this predatory lending. We got a Congress that's a joke. Uh, you know, and uh, we've just got to find the right solution. It's not going to come from official sources. It's going to come from what we're talking about tonight, which is the power of the, the people. people. Oh. The people. Power to the people. Power to the people. So, uh, when we go in there tonight, we want to make sure that we say, I am your name, where you're from. This was really powerful last time. We all said, this is my name, this is where I'm from, and I'm here to speak to item 15 on the non-consent agenda. And probably the first question we should ask is wow. why it's on the non-consent yes. agenda. Exactly. And then continue to speak for it. And then, uh, because what can happen tonight is, is if they have enough votes to move it, they can move it off the non-consent agenda and force the vote tonight, right? right. So let's, um, let's make sure we're all united in that message that we want this resolution voted on tonight. We want it passed tonight. 
and we are not going to be satisfied until that until and unless that happens. Right. Right. <coughs> Anyone else have the uh, want to have the bullhorn? Sharon. <laughs> We no. want Sharon. <laughs> Where is Sharon? All right, let me say a few words. All right, yeah. Where are you going to hit this way? Yep. Yep. Like I just want to say power to the people. Power, power to, to the people. people. Because the people have the power. Because yeah. the people this have government the power. works for us. Yes. And we need to make sure that they understand who they work for. Because they seem to be, they seem to have a misconception of who they work for and who they represent. They represent the people out here. The homeowners in this community. The societies that are being broken up. The families that are being broken up. You want to know why there was so much snow on the streets? Because homeowners are not there anymore. That's why snow couldn't be removed off the streets. Because people weren't living there anymore. You got renters who say, this ain't my home. I'm just renting. I ain't cleaning up no sidewalk. I'm not cleaning off no street. So we got to start making sure that we make demands. We have to make demands that, as Marianne said, that why is this on the, um, what is it? The non-consent. The non-consent. When on the 11th, it was, ready it was already what? Consented? No, it wasn't. No. It was still not consented. It was tabled. No. It was tabled. It was tabled. Okay, so we want to know why today we're here and it's on a non-consent. There's no explanation for that when this took place already on the 11th. So we have to be demanding what we want from them. And we have to stick together as a people. If they had any type of justice or any type of humbleness in their heart, people that's getting thrown out of their house in foreclosure or people that their mortgage is $200,000 and uh, trying to get something to knock it down to 100000 and maybe they can deal with that. They don't even want to help them folks. Right. And these are the people that we, we, we put in office. That's right. All right, election time coming, remember that. That's right. And let them remember that tonight. That's right. When we go in there, you got, we got to vote for you, right? That's right. So, uh, hey, hold you to the eye. Right. You might get burnt. That's right. <laughs> because these people need homes like everybody else. When you throw the parents out, you throw the kids out. That's right. And if you don't care about the kids, you don't care about the parents, I know you don't care about the kids. Right. So right. this thing got to change. Yeah. And right. we say we must keep the fight on. Yeah. Uh, like a friend of mine, Steve, yeah. said, he, see, he said, uh, while the iron is hot, strike. Right. <laughs> strike while the iron is hot. So we better strike now. That's right. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Power to the people. Right. I'm saying, David. Council seats, can y'all lower y'all voice because we're making Turn up the bullhorn. Our homeowner, and we want to make noise. That's why we Turn up the bullhorn. So they can hear us. Good. We need to make noise so they can hear us. That's right. All right. Well, I just want to point out something here is against foreclosures in Irvington, New Jersey. I just have to say, David Lyons has been on your court, in your court, on your side. From the very beginning when we started this fight, and he's here tonight at this, in the same way. This is the reason we have this even on the agenda tonight at all. Right? All right. All right. Yeah, another thing about Wall Street. It needs to be understood that the banks have already been bailed out for every single cent that they would quote-unquote lose if the principal were reduced. They were bailed out through TARP. They were bailed out through their uh, credit default swaps, as they're called. They've been bailed out to the Federal Reserve. There's something called quantitative easing. The Federal Reserve is buying all this bad financial paper. So we should understand that they've been indemnified time after time, and still they have to go after the homeowner. Still they have to reach into the pockets of the families of the United States, tens of millions of families, and rob them and yeah. defraud them of their life savings. And their, their thirst for profit is endless. There's nothing that we can do except to continue fighting them and rousing the people against them and, you know, getting through these few, these few measures. It's, it's very interesting that this seemingly small measure is getting so much uh, resistance. Now, who the heck could be high, be, could be reaching into Irvington 
in order to stir up all this resistance. It's lobbyists. Wall Street. Wall Street, yeah. The banks. You know, you go to the hospital, you don't have the money. 45,000 people die because in the United States every year because they can't afford medicine. They're, that's to pump up the profits of who? Wall Street. And the pharmaceutical companies. And the pharmaceutical companies. Well, that's Wall Street, too. Right. And, you know, you look at all of these problems, they all... They all trace to Wall Street. The problem is not that there is not enough wealth for this country. There should not be a single poor person in the United States. That's right. That's right. There should not That's be right. a single right. hungry right. child. That's right. Instead, they're cutting food stamps. They're cutting food stamps because who needs the money? The wealthiest people in America. <laughs> the wealthiest people in America, also known as? Wall Street, who is treating the people as the enemy? Wall Street. Why is NSA spying on you? Why are we getting into this mess in the Ukraine? That's not our war, that's none of our concern. Who's behind that? Wall Street. Always the same enemy. We always have to be aware that behind of all of this is the unquenchable thirst for profits of Wall Street. Right. Every country, kind, because we've got these people's issues. There's not enough jobs. There's a terrible health care system. There's a financial crisis. There's hunger. And it's always the same problem. It's always Wall, Wall Street. Street. And not but last but not least, there's also a dreadful threat to world peace. Do not be lulled. This stuff looks ominously like stuff that occurred in the late 1930s leading up to World War II. Now, uh, you know, and all you're seeing about this crisis in Ukraine, it's all lies. Every last damn word. Yep. So that's another thing. That, and you know, why does that go back? That goes back to contention over sea routes, oil and gas, and all that kind of stuff with Russia. And all that, again, traces to Wall Street. Wall Street. All right. Uh, okay. Power to the people. Power to the people. Bail out the people, not the banks. 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 Like the power of the people, because the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people, because the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop! Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop! Thank you. 
some parts that are missing. And I don't know what they are because I don't understand the whole procedure and what the uproar is about at the moment. So I only have two minutes, and I can't talk about what I want to talk about in two minutes. So as a result, I took time to print up something regarding my questions. Uh, I'm going to give these out to you, and I would appreciate if you read this and give me some feedback on the foreclosures and what the hospital is about. And uh, it seems as though there's a plan in place uh, being presented. I'm not sure what step the plan is, but the step one, step two, or step three, but I appreciate you explain to me where we're going with foreclosures to try and save people's homes from uh, and give me a procedure from one to the completion so I understand what's going on. Uh, because I know whatever you do is going to have some type of impact on every system in urban. It may be positive, it may be negative. I don't know, so I need help. On the agenda item, one, of, one thing I like to two things I have questions on. And the first one is the um, on page two, authorization to the lease, seven thousand dollars. What's that for? Could you explain that to us? Also six. And then, uh, number eleven. What is the new emergency operations center? What is it? Why, why do we need it? How do we benefit from that? And um, on page three, the re-adoption of the bond audience. Uh, what is that for? For capital improvement? What is that for? And then you have also on here number of uh, the motion to accept Comcast. That's on your agenda on page four. And a couple of questions I want to know is how often do they renew this uh, Comcast policy and the insurance, who do the insurance cover? And I know that we usually have police and state police, who are they paid by? They paid by the state to watch these people, to put the wires up. And then number four, I see a lot of things when you start cleaning up. A lot of the Comcast people leave those wires down there. Are they going to clean up better instead of leaving those wires all down there? And uh, do they hire people from from the town to go to the town? Answer some of those questions, Thank please. You your, uh, Good evening. My name is Cynthia Johnson, 47B, Mead Street in Orange, New Jersey. I just would like to address item 8 and item 15. And we'll do that after, right? Uh, I went to the uh, 214 at the terrace, and I wanted to uh, address uh, item number 15 on the agenda about the um, foreclosure procedure. And on the last um, meeting, uh, council meeting, uh, nothing was done. I think we tabled it, but uh, we see all these people here, and these people are losing their homes. And uh, they need to have you uh, think about them and not about mm -hmm. your political agenda. We want you to uh, listen to the people. And you can say anything that you want to about, oh, it's not working here, it's not doing this here, it's not doing that here. But I think if you had attended uh, some of the meetings around town, you would know that this is something that these the people in Irvington that are in um, you know danger of losing their home, then they want you, the council members, to think about it and do something about it. Don't make it a political agenda. Think about the people for a change. Chairman of the Coalition to Save Our Homes. 
which has been working closely with the communities united around item 15 on the agenda. I have a question for the council. This, this resolution, this program is a no-brainer. Why in the world would public servants ever vote against a measure like this or hold it up for any reason? Now, uh, the mortgage bubbles began in the middle of 1990s. It pumped up, it pumped up, it pumped up, it started to collapse in 2006. That was eight years ago. The financial system collapsed in 2008. Nothing has been done for homeowners. You have before you a measure which can advance an effective measure for approximately 20% of the underwater homeowners in uh, Irvington. That is a huge step compared to what has been done anywhere in the country before now. Why in the world would you ever not vote it forward promptly, immediately, in the interests of your constituents, in the interests of your city? How are you going to be council persons of a city if it's not here? It's not going to be here if you let it go down the, the drain with this foreclosure crisis. You must act. You must not let this go by. And, you know, where could the impulse be coming from? We're getting this uh, false literature put before us, totally off the point about eminent domain, trying to confuse the issue. There's no excuse in such things. We know where these come from. These come from false flag operations, Koch brothers, the Wall Street <laughs> interests, and whatever. Only the Wall Street interests have any reason to oppose this measure because it challenges their absolute control and sets a uh, precedent for cities all over this country together with Richmond, California. So can anybody please tell you, tell me, why is this not being addressed immediately? You addressed some concerns last week, two weeks ago. There's been plenty of time for you to look into it and adequately inform yourself. There's no reason for you not to have done it. There's no reason for you not to put this on the agenda. Yes, yes, Mr. Beasley. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, and yet uh, here we are, right where it was two weeks ago, and you know, the vast majority of the people who are, had any voice on this, what you're hearing from the grassroots is pass the resolution. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eve Lewis, 194 Isabella. I was here last week. Fortunately, it was supposed to be a vote for the domain, imminent domain, for people who are losing their home. Since 2008, there is a crisis about foreclosure. As we all know, it is time for the people who were appointed by the people of the township of New Jersey to do some action. Action which will lead to help the people who give you the power to sit here tonight. You, I'm addressing the whole seven, all the respect that I have for you. It is important because time is the essence. We cannot wait any longer. Because right. people are suffering, people are having stroke, people are having heart attack because Wall Street was bailed out and the Main Street is still torture. All right. Why you have the power to make everything tonight to be his to make his History because the power rests in your hands tonight. There's no excuse. Quit, forget about politics. Because politics is something very important. We all love politics. We all have differences, but when it comes to the humanity and the name of the humanity, we all have an obligation. Mm -hmm. A moral, moral obligation to do the right thing. Not because we love each other, we, we ought to love each other as human beings. But when it comes to self-interest, who did decide? Try to make tonight. I urge you, all the members of the council, men and women, 
platforms to do the right thing to vote that resolution so people can go of their life so they can ease up the pain a little bit. Don't say we are concerned because we are not get away from impact at this. No, this is wrong. I urge you with all the respect that we all sit in this room up for you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to do the right thing for, at this, for the sake of the Everton community and the, and the name of the humanity. That's all I'm asking you. I hope you do the right thing. Because tonight, Everton can make history. And the map, you can make that map, everything go down. Forget about the shooting and, 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 and this. We can make history and no more, you know, the dummy, the dominant of effort can go on everything. My name is Mary Zashik, and I'm a community organizer with New Jersey Communities United. <coughs> Two weeks ago, I stood in front of this council with dozens of homeowners <coughs> urging immediate action to propel this next step in a policy that would finally allow municipalities to intervene in this foreclosure crisis and provide much needed principal reductions for underwater mortgages in Irvington. Despite the best efforts of strong council members, thank you, Council <coughs> Councilman Lyons and Councilwoman McElroy specifically. This council failed to act. So tonight we are back with this petition that's signed by nearly 2,000 people from all over the country. Many of them from Irvington and from Essex County. Uh, demonstrating national support for communities like Irvington that dare to take on Wall Street. We know, that the face of the for we know what the face of the foreclosure crisis looks like in Irvington. Ellis Avenue and the blocks around it are heartbreaking reminders of what has been lost here. But I've been knocking on the doors of more than half of those 199 impacted homeowners, many of whom are in this room tonight. You just heard from one of them. The hidden face of this foreclosure crisis is on Webster Street, a beautiful, seemingly stable community with four toxic PLS mortgages in imminent threat just under the surface. And one of those homeowners was so ill he couldn't talk to us at the door. What does that say? Where is he going to go? It's on the surface, it's right underneath the surface on Olympic Terrace, where there are six PLS mortgages, private label security <coughs> mortgages, the ones that we're specifically targeting in this policy, that threaten this diverse working class neighborhood. It's already too late for one of those families. The home is now boarded up, putting all of the other homes around it. It is a cancer that threatens, to, that, that, that threatens to spread so that we have not just one pocket of Ellis Avenue, but multiple all over Irvington. So when I'm standing here again, urging you again to act swiftly and with courage, and to do so because you as elected officials of this devastated township finally have it within your power to begin um, to right what has been wrong and literally save lives. You must both vote yes tonight. You must consider this. And lend your support throughout the rest of this process to prioritize hardworking families and working them. And you did have questions. You did have questions last night. The reason you said you wanted to table this is because it was it was presented and you had questions. And Councilwoman McElroy invited you to get together with the township to get those questions answered so we wouldn't be here again. And I don't know, I, that, as far as I know, that didn't happen, and I want to know why. I want to know why our rich and homeowners have to wait even longer for a solution that's been six years in the, in the making, right? Yes. We yes. have the power, and we can fight this, and we need you. you. You're standing behind you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ross Place, Apartment 34, Irvington, New Jersey, 07111. Um, I'm here to talk to the council about agenda item 15. The um, this is this is critical for this town. This is a first step, all right. And I need to address some uh, rumors about this eminent domain. People are trying to confuse the issue with this story about Hackensack. This is absolutely ridiculous. It has nothing to do with what is going on in Irvington. This is specifically has to do with the part of eminent domain law that was looked at by a gentleman named Udi of the ACLU 
in which case it talks about paper property. This is not the talking about the actual physical property. This is the paper property of the note, which is owned by multiple people. There is a case law in New Jersey regarding a, the, uh, the paper property of a lease that was owned by multiple people <clears throat> in which eminent domain was used to successfully try to uh, deal with the computer. It, this specific part of eminent domain has to do with multiple owners that cannot be contacted or cannot get a consensus so that the property can be taken care of in the best interest of the community in the spirit of eminent domain. And this goes back to Roman law, to English common law, and here in the United States, it's older than all of us. The procedures are in place. The forms are being followed. So I know this is an issue of covering yourselves, protecting yourselves, but you can still do that while following the forms. And I urge you to vote yes, please. Meaning means I'm not a homeowner, I'm a renter, but I recognize the problem. And if there's something, if somebody's speaking to you all and threatening you all behind the back, you need to come to us, we the people, so we can fight for you. specific in terms of a community benefit. It's that simple. So if a community wanted to build a school and or a hospital and they thought it was beneficial to the community at large to move the homeowners and compensate them, that's a legitimate reason for using eminent domain. So what are we talking about in Irvington? I just I job a lot. I run around, around Irvington for years. And for the last 10 years, I have seen a significant difference in the landscape of Irvington, New Jersey. Okay? There's been an increase of boarded up and abandoned buildings, burnt out buildings that have stood next to homeowners for years. And the township has neglected its responsibility to act. Just think for a second. Right down Lions Avenue, there's a burnt out building. But five years before that building actually burned, it was abandoned. Okay? It was a squatter's paradise. And ultimately, it resulted in a disaster that could cost lives. Had the city, had the township of Irvington acted, okay? Had the township acted by demolishing that building, by using eminent domain to demolish that building, Potential lives could have been saved. Okay? If that building existed in Summit, New Jersey, Chatham, Livingston, they would have acted. So my question is, why are we not, why are we inactive? Why are we not acting on behalf of the elected officials, the children, and the people in this township? When you look at the, the ramification of foreclosures, on my block, Two doors down from me, that house has been foreclosed on twice. And it has impacted the value of the surrounding community. If you look at north, east, west, and south of Irvington, many abandoned homes. It has a significant impact on the devaluing of the people who live in that community. And yet the township claim that they cannot act and they have to find, go through all these illegal maneuvers to find the owners of the homes. The banks didn't go through any legal maneuvers. The banks are foreclosing on people and they have no legal evidence that they even own the homes that they're foreclosing on. So I suggest to you that it is not too late to stop the bleeding in this township. It is not too late to have your the, the interests of the people at hand. It is not too late to look out for the children, the families, the people who lived here for, for decades, it is not too late for you as a body to act in their best interest. And I hope tonight that you will act.
five minutes to answer just a number of very pertinent questions. I'll see if we can get a written response uh, even to the uh, VA's office or the attorney's office to answer the questions here. Um, just for acknowledge of the council members, um, this matter was discussed somewhat thoroughly uh, last night, and it is on a generally different language. But item 15 seems to really set in motion uh, some of the things that we talked about. But I really would like for the uh, audience to know that the council, uh, even in July of uh, last year, 2013, the council moved the resolution that dealt with urban having a, list, a hearing on foreclosures. Uh, this has been something that Council has done a uh, responsive uh, move by Council Lines, uh, second by myself, and approved at that uh, Council meeting by five of, of all the members that were there, two was that. Um, we're at a point now where the administration is asking that it further goes to the planning. So a lot of the things that I'm hearing about what the Council having done and this and that. Council is on the record for addressing this issue. It's just taking the administration that long to look at it, do what they have to do. Uh, it's before us now. Uh, it was discussed in some of the detail, but council members, I'd like to open up for whatever responses. Um, Let me start with council members. Well, first of all, I did the research on Oh, yesterday I had a conference with the township attorney. It's not for me because my house is not mulligans of the water because it is a new valve and it's half the price that it was before. So what my concern was with eminent domain if someone should come in and want to purchase it and have a legitimate reason why they want to put that structure here for safety, whatever. Whatever the value of this house that has either revalued and that the green part you get, that's what that's that's the market price and that's what you pay for. So I wanted to go again. So if you my house went from two hundred seven to one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. If I had a mortgage, which last year before the revalue was two hundred and sixteen dollars, sixteen hundred or whatever it was. Well, I still have to pay the bank. And the, 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 the attorney said, yes. We can do some type of agreement with the bank that they can restructure your mortgage, but you still owe them. That was something I didn't know. Then I wanted to know, what about these people who house is in foreclosure? He says, once foreclosure starts, it's nothing he can do, you can do with it. It has to follow the procedure. Now listen, listen, no, listen, no, listen. No, no, no. It's here, and you can explain let, it. Let, okay. let me set the rules. The council will see you. You want to listen to that. All the hours, the person is not going to be uh, tolerated. So I'm asking you to respect the call on the council. <coughs> information so when I gave you this paper I passed out to the council and let I did it. I wanted you just to scan it and be knowledgeable because there are a lot of people who are houses are being foreclosed and they think that they can get some type of assistance. There is none. This is what the township attorney told me on yesterday. I met with him. So all I'm saying to you, I don't have a problem with something to help you, I will support it. But I know you have many fly-by things that comes into urban cities and our people wind up being on the short end of the stick. I wanted to know whether this particular company was a non-profit, and they say no. So anytime people go into business, if it's non-profit, they're there to make money. And I didn't want you to wind up, like I said, well, I, I suppose you do what you want to do, but I don't want you to up in arms um, thinking you're going to get something and when you wind up, it's nothing. 
Because my concern is other water is true. You can get most of these mortgages, and I know they all oh, is Bank of America, and they, not Bank of America, Wells Fargo and Chase. Chase and, 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 and Wells Fargo have only 10% of those mortgages. It's Bank of America who has at least 80% percent of those mortgages and most of these properties are in foreclosure. And I was just trying to get information for you. I'm not against you. That's why you hired me. You said the council don't do things. I took my time yesterday and went out to do what if I can and make you knowledgeable that you know the decision you made how it was going to affect you. I have not said don't do it. It's up to you. It's up to these council people. I have not asked for no support. <coughs> the person who is in charge of the lead committee after the conversation I said you know many people are here you know many times we get caught up in the rapture and emotional because there are some people who are able anytime you are a salesperson you're supposed to be able to sell your product and if you can't sell your product then you are a whole salesperson so all I'm saying to you is be very mindful those people who property is in foreclosure if you think you're going to get some help, they say once it starts, it's nothing they can do. There is 1,900 properties in Irvington. Only 199 they say they're going to work with. What is going to happen to the others? That was my concern. So I gave you the things to let you know what eminent domain is. If people, and let me just say this. If we decided with this eminent domain and tried to fight Bank of America and all of these big mortgage companies who have money. It, it, the long term is, is that the township will have to pay money for litigation. I read an article and it stated that Richmond had tried to and it failed because it had cost Richmond, Virginia $300,000 we, and they say it isn't worth it, and they stop. I saw some with Hackensack, and what I'm saying, the federal government, not the state, federal government, not the state, recommend this, and that's all I'm saying, and I'm finished, and if the council vote for you, or whatever it is, I, 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 I have nothing to say, because your, or uh, their voices, or their vote has happened. That's it, thank you. Yes. Thank you, uh, Council President. You know, um, I want to thank the uh, this council. We don't agree on a lot of things, but they did work hard. All of us worked hard to make sure that um, the resolution for foreclosures uh, was looked at not only by the legal team, uh, but by other researchers to give us some information so that we could uh, vote uh, the best way we know how. And I hear a lot of talk about uh, this is political, there's nothing political when it comes to me. Uh, I live in this town and I want to make sure that we do the right thing, not only by the residents that it's affecting, uh, but also by the other uh, residents. So there's nothing political. Um, as you all may remember, recall, we started the process in July with the leadership of uh, Council Alliance. I was here as well. And Many of us worked hard, eight nights, long hours, investigating this with other communities, uh, other communities that surround us, um, is doing nothing. And to be the first uh, in Essex County to do something like this, I think we have to make sure that we get it right the first time. And that we didn't do the research that we were asking for and just rushing or something uh, to reason I think um, we would have, we would have left uh, all the stones on the turn. So I'm happy tonight that all of the council worked hard to and really uh, dive into the resolutions to and ask the right questions. You know, my issues with the administration, I think they should have did they could have done a better job uh, to making sure that if this was something that they thought they needed as another tool. It should have happened a long time ago. And keep in mind, this is just another tool. It's not going to happen overnight. This is just another tool. 
uh, that the administration can use to try to help uh, the residents that's facing the fall. It's going to be a long process. Um, so I just want to so I just wanted to address that that folks are going to leave here thinking that it's political. We don't agree all the time, and we work together on this uh, to at least get something here. Someone asked about uh, item number six, item number eight as well. Uh, number six is a property that the county owns that has um, asbestos in that needs to be cleaned up. Number eight, someone asked about a grant, that grant. Um, we're accepting a grant from the county so that the administration can actually help uh, folks that are earning that are homeless. And then someone asked about number one. The county owns about 80 properties and everything. And there will be various uh, capital improvements to the properties that the town owns. And that's number uh, one on the second page. I think that was Ms. Sullivan. So, Mr. Kirk, if you can send the backup information to Ms. Sullivan so that she can have that. I already addressed number 15. And then the last one is number 18. Someone asked about the Comcast application. Comcast application usually comes up every 10 to 15 years. And they provide the cable service for our community. And there's a number of things that's in that contract. Um, that you're welcome to review. Uh, some benefits that uh, will benefit our school district, um, this school uh, government, um, and I think that will go to Ms. Sullivan as well. So, Mr. Kirk, if you can send her a copy of the contract as well, and she can see all the different things. Oh, you have, okay. Ms. Sullivan asked also on item number 11, this is about the emergency operation center. This emergency operations center is going to be part of the West. It's a grant money. It's not from the township. After Hurricane Sandy, I don't know we, it was very difficult to find places for our residents to use our displays. This probably, hopefully, is going to help out on that end. One of the key things about this that I'm interested I'm so grateful about, they have a timeline by December 2014 to be finished. So I'm looking forward to see this finishes at the corner of Duran Place and Wagner Place at the fire station there. We're going to make it as a new emergency center. <coughs> For item number 15, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows from the record. This is one step out of many steps that's going to happen. It's just an investigation of only 199 properties, about 11 percent, about 10 percent from the 1900 property that are in foreclosure or having problems in the township of Irvington. So the key thing is we just have to be aware that if the bank are talking to the administration, we have to take advantage now with the bank because the whole concept is is to help our home. So in every step that we are, if they want to help our own homeowner, I'm hoping the administration will take advantage and our residents will take advantage to help them and you know, learning on how to mm, mm, get through that system. As you know, it's a very complicated system, financing, mortgaging. So that's the part I cannot wait to help the administration accountable, helping holding the residents accountable as we use that tool in our advantage to help our homeowner from the township of Irvington. With that being said, I think we answer some of those questions. So I'm going to go. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, number five, I mean, five and six, it's basically professional service. Site remediation is basically a cleanup. Is, is basically what that money is for. Is so number eight is we uh, the council is accepting a grant to uh, for social services for the homeless. So it's simply that we money that's been uh, given to the town and the council is accepting that money to put into 
uh, two hours. Number 18, it's not really about you know, why is it anything. It's basically uh, the council is Compass has had a 15 year contract where they act as a famous service provider for the township of Everett. And uh, we, as the chairman of the cable committee, we've had several meetings, and today we had a meeting with Comcast, uh, which you'll hear about later from the council president. We had a meeting with Comcast, and uh, we're having some discussions on what we want for the township, but I, I must say the meeting was productive, but we're going to have more meetings because we're talking about a 15-year contract, and there are some things that we want to look at to make sure that the township it's the best deal that they can. And um, I know today, one of the things that we discussed is, I just want to make sure that when we bring it to the council, the full council, that we, Irvington, is among those who have taken advantage of every option that is available to us. So that's, that's uh, what we're in the midst of now. And, you know, I appreciate the council making me chairman because it's something that I thought about for a long time. And um, we can rest assured when the council, when it comes before the council, we're gonna put the language in uh, that's gonna make sure that it's the best that we, that we can get. And it's gonna be as good as any, I guarantee it'll be as good as any ordinance for any municipality. And lastly, the, uh, the foreclosure in the eminent domain uh, resolution. As has been said, we're talking about 10% of the people that's going to be uh, probably helped. And at this point, I think even if we have 1%, we need to do it because the banks did come in and take advantage of a whole lot of people mm -hmm. at that time. And they came in and made people think that they could have the American dream and it turned out to be an American nightmare. And, but you know, it's like anything, if someone comes to you and tell you how your life is going to get better, because one of, the, one of the things most people want is a home. When somebody tells you your life is going to get better and everything is going to be rosy and they're going to help you, particularly a bank. Because I think before this, a lot of people trusted banks and they expected that if you go to a bank, that for the most part you can trust this bank because you put your money there. <coughs> and basically, when you put your money there, your money is there. Uh, we have FDIC, which makes sure that your money is going to be there. So when a banker is talking to someone that's poor, they expect that, okay, the bank said that I can afford this, so apparently I can afford it. Because most banks, before that time, if you couldn't afford it, they would tell you no in the party. But then they came up with this, and I think somebody sat somewhere and said, how can we make poor people poor? <laughs> and, and so they came up with, with, with this. And uh, you know, I think that there's, there's been a lot of discussion, and I think the council has looked at all of the issues before us. Previously, eminent domain was used by governments to take property from people. They would come in and they would say, well, you know, we want to build, build an aid here. We don't care, we're going to take the property from these people. And as a result, some governmental officials went along with it. And those government officials, uh, in my opinion, did the wrong thing. But at this point, eminent domain is now going to be a tool to help people. And we need to understand, it's not going to help everybody. But we understand that. It's not, it's not going to help everybody. And as I, uh, as I was telling my fellow council members last night, I received a letter from Wells Fargo where this lady was about to be put out of her home and then Wells Fargo has now said that they're going to uh, do a trial payment which she would have to pay three months. And if she pays that, then they will work with her so that she does not get put out of her home. And I think, had this not been in process, I don't think they would have worked with her. I think at this point they want to show, because you know, it's like, uh, if you're stealing, and, and the court tells you if you stop stealing, uh, we're going to put you on probation, and you won't have to go to jail. And I think they look at it like this. 
if we don't start doing the right thing, this is going to grow. This is going to grow, and uh, it's going to be everywhere. And I think Irvington has a chance now. I think we have a chance to finally do something that's going to make people look at Irvington differently. Yes, we can. And, uh, you know, I am favorable. favor of this and you know one of the things that I'm, I'm more proud of this uh, this year probably the most years that I've been on the council is that we look at things and some of the things that we look at people don't like and some of the things they like but do we do look at things because you'll find this year I think we've worked more together on some things <coughs> than we have in the past. That's right. And that's one of the things that I'm proud of, that we do work more together on some things. And uh, we still don't all, always agree on the same thing, but we look at it. And I can say that honestly, that we do look at it. So I'm going to support this and ask my colleagues to, because, and one of the things is, yes, we may have to pay at some point. We may have to pay some funds to fight some things, but it is the taxpayer's money. And we working on behalf of the tax So, uh, you know, and that's, I think that's about all I have to say is this. Now we have a time, like we have a chance to do some things that everybody, and I'm not just talking about people in Irvington, but particularly people in Irvington, but everybody can look proudly at us and say, this was one of the first communities that decided to help their city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I didn't want to say anything. I, too, am going to be supportive of this item simply because Urban has the opportunity to be proactive and stop reactive. We also have the opportunity to lead by example. And, you know, I heard everything my colleagues have said about what could happen, what might happen, and I respect that. However, we put in these positions to work for the betterment of the citizens. And I agree with Council Line, if it's only 1% that we can help, we need to help that 1%. We need to do whatever we can do to ensure that banks, other corporations, will never again under the council of purpose in any place else.
When you get some to the agenda, it comes in our package. Normally around Thursday, we get a chance to read it. We don't, and we discourage from what they call walk-ons. <clears throat> that's something that's not on the agenda, but at the last minute, you want counsel. Uh, at the last meeting, I believe two of the council members were about, I was out of town, I think one was uh, kind of had you know, some health issues. And the attorney, when he called me, I think one was dealing with a grant, the other one was bottom in the domain, I said, it was take it through committee, let the committee discuss it, then bring it to the attorney. However, it got to the legal committee, because we have a committee dealing with housing, And I guess because of where it came to us, it, wasn't, it was more worthy of a 15 minute discussion to understand what eminent domain is and who it affects and how it goes. <coughs> and when it didn't pass, and I'm telling you, for that reason, I believe, it didn't have enough votes and it wasn't discussed, it wasn't brought to the committee to be discussed. This whole issue about politics and all this, I've been around long enough to know that people talk about politics and playing politics. So, you know, the idea is that we discussed this in full last night, questions were asked, and uh, it's on the agenda. It's worded different, but it basically means the same thing. And then, even with the council, when we designate an area that needs a redevelopment, it has to come back to the council. The council determines and authorizes that. So as has been indicated, it's a long process. And hopefully when this goes to the uh, planning board or whoever, you know, they look into it and look into it and all aspects. And it is eventually in one way or another we'll come back to the council. But it, it at least moves forward. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for the help of the discussion. And we move on to our regular agenda. All items listed on the agenda are considered routine by the municipality and have been listed for one roll call vote for the adoption of all items. Any motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Now we move to uh, our non-consent agenda. This is a uh, Ordinance on second reading. Chair recognizes Councilman Levy for coming to the final. Thank you, Councilman. I say the ordinance on re-adoption of a bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements $533,600, or $508,000 for the approval. Bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements in by the Township of Burlington and the County of Essex, New Jersey. Appropriate $533,600, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $508,189 bonds or notes of the township to finance for the cost thereof. Second. Uh, comments from the council? Roll call. Council Member Frederick? Yes. Inman? Yes. Elsie Jones? Yes. S. Jones? Yes. Lyons? Yes. McElroy? Yes. President Beast? Yes. I move for the Readoption of a two million four hundred thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars refunding bond ordinance for tax bills. Refunding bond ordinance provided for change of amounts of homeless water for tax levy in by the township of Burlington and the county of Essex, New Jersey, appropriate two million four hundred thirty-six thousand dollars, two million four hundred thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars. Therefore, authorizing the issuance of two million four hundred thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars bond notes to the township for financing the cost thereof. Second. Comments from the council? Roll call. Council Member Frederick? Yes. Inman? Yes. Elsie Jones? Yes. S. Jones? Yes. Lyon? No. Galroy? Yes. President Beasley? Yes. An ordinance amending an ordinance establishing a green advisory committee will be heard at this time. The clerk will read the notice of hearing. Notice is hereby given that the Municipal Council of the Township of Burlington will be on March 25, 2014. At 8 o'clock p.m. in the Council Chamber, Municipal Building, Civic Square, Burlington, New Jersey, at which time and place or at any time and place, 
in which such meeting or the further consideration of such ordinance shall from time to time be adjourned. The whole person's interested will be given an opportunity to be heard concerning such ordinance, and at such meeting or adjourned meetings, said ordinance will be further considered for second and final reading. So to read the ordinance by title. In order to amend the ordinance to establish the Irvington Green Advisory Committee. <clears throat> Public hearing on this ordinance is now open. Anyone would like to address council on this ordinance, please come to our station name and address the record. Chair recognizes the councilman on the present. Motion to close public hearing. I second that. Chair again recognizes the councilman. Motion to adopt this ordinance in second reading after public hearing. I second. Roll call, Mr. Cook. Roll call to adopt the ordinance. Council Member Frederick. Yes. Inman. Yes. Elsie Jones. Yes. S. Jones. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Delroy. Yes. yes. President Beasley. Yes. Do you recognize the Council Member Delroy? Thank you, Mr. President. I move to adopt the bill list. <coughs> second. Comments from Council. Roll call. Council Member Frederick. Yes. Inman. Yes. Elsie Jones. Yes. S. Jones. Yes. Lyons. Yes. No. Delroy. Yes. President Beasley. Yes. Chair recognizes Council Member. I haven't submitted the resolution on avoiding the bid snow removal and all the services you over the structure and won't be approved. It's a resolution awarding a bid for snow removal and bowling services to your way construction based upon the low hourly rates for the use of various pieces of equipment. Comments from Council? <coughs> Roll call. Council Member Frederick? Yes. Inman? No. Elsie Jones? Yes. S. Jones? Yes. Fine? Yes. McElroy? Yes. President Beasley? Yes. Chair recognizes Council. This person, this uh, I'm resolution to authorize a one year contract extension for the web hosting services and move will be approved. There's a resolution extending the web hosting service contract to one year with precise virtual development for a total amount of $22,994. Second. Comments from Council? Roll call. Council Member Frederick? Yes. Yes. Elsie Jones? Yes. S. Jones? Yes. Lyons? No. Delroy? Yes. President Beasley? Yes.
or of losing your job if you oppose the oppressors. All right? Yes, we are being oppressed. When you say that you're doing an investigation, what I think about is when I take my car to the car dealership and they say they're going to do a nine-point inspection. They open the hood. Yep, that's there. That's there. That's there. And it takes forever for us to get anything fixed. All right? Well, we're talking about the um, eminent domain, okay, or just foreclosures in general. I don't know if you guys even realize where this started. All right? HUD identified 229 straw buyers within the Essex County area, all right? They only prosecuted for some of them. Um, the rest of us, many of us lost our homes, okay, are in the process of losing our homes, and they targeted <clears throat> North Irvington and Orange, all right, the impoverished areas, the urban areas are now turning into prime real estate after they fueled it along with colonization. So we're dealing with um, unscrupulous bankers, the brokers, you name it, and we're still at the point of dealing with resolutions. Yes, please, focus on the eminent domain, but what we need is some kind of legislature passed. I, again, I asked, you, I asked you, like I did the last time, to step outside of yourselves, to step outside of the political aspect, to step outside of the political answers, and let's move forward and do something proactive before there is nothing left. You will not have any jobs. There will be no city. Detroit, they emptied it out, and it turned into real estate that they want to use for casinos. Now, what reason would the banks have to empty out all these properties? Leave them empty and not make any money. Anybody think about that? There is a reason for everything that they're doing. I am very passionate about this, as I said before, that my mom is, is we've been fighting for 11 years with this. And I was told this past Thursday that they're actually going to kick her out of her house. What? And they were wrong. All right? They don't care about the old stuff. They don't care about anything. This is something that if we do not take a different stance on this, we will have nothing left. All right? I believe in justice. I believe in equality. I don't believe in speaking in political terms. I don't like to deal in political terms. So sometimes some things I say come out hard. All right? So let me apologize to you. Now I'm not attacking anybody. But we still have to do something more than investigate. This has been on the table for too long now for it to still be at investigation stage. I know you just passed the eminent domain, but that still it has to go a step further. We need some legislature passed before it's too late. The only people that will be able to help us are our congressmen and our senators. I know one of them is a nut, but still, <laughs> nevertheless, we still need to have this legislature passed. We can't afford to let this go on any longer. Thank you.
not just a month. You had time. What's taking so long? You should be able to look at this, and I think everybody here is smart enough to look at this, analyze with the lawyers and everything, and find out whether this will work. But you get a little window and say, it's not going to work. We need more time. It sounds like it's a delay. It's being delayed. And I'm saying that why are you thinking people are going to be kicked out of their homes? This is critical. Why are you thinking and checking things out? When they're out in the street, you can't put them back like the other people. They out. They don't have no homes no more. Are their kids out, their family out, and it's going to touch us. Somewhere in families, one of us, or some of us, going to have family members that are going to be out too. And we're going to still be thinking. But, yes, what I just got to say is critical, just like she said. I, that was something that was on my heart to come up here and say because I live in Irvington. My name is Abdul Hill, 68 Myrtle Avenue, and I'm seeing this thing taking, uh, taking effect on Irvington. This city I've been living in for 15 years, and it's getting worse. People are losing their homes. People that don't deserve to lose their homes. So excuse me if I talk out of turn, but I just need to be answered. Okay? Thank you, Council. Thank you.
And this is the other thing I just wanted to tell you. You, uh, the Senior Citizen Building, a group of us, we volunteered and uh, went into the Senior Citizen Building three days, Friday, Saturday, yesterday, and today we gave the reopening um, coffee uh, clutch, clutch donuts or whatever to the seniors. We painted and we have the people here. Uh, we had uh, Councilman McElroy who came out, stood, helped us. Uh, Mayor came out and I just stole all day long Friday. And see, these are the type of things that I'm talking about. We want to try and work together and you keep telling us about we don't work together, but that's not true. We were, and I'm Mr. Uh, Matt B, he came out and he knew he stayed there the whole day painting with us and this is your boy. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about was that um, you put a sign, a uh, name uh, underneath the sign on Nesbitt Terrace. Now, what you, when I, I don't have anything against Reverend Ford because Reverend Ford, I really like him. But Reverend Ford doesn't even live in Urban Gym. And you put the name up there. What? And you um, didn't inform you how do you pass these things? You can just go up, change streets, names and everything, citizens have nothing to do with it. Or what procedures do you go through to do this? This was another political uh, stunt that you uh, uh, you know you did. And uh, Councilman Beasley, you stood up there. Not one person from my block was invited to the ceremony. Not one person. We are the homeowners there. We are the taxpayers. Not one was invited. And you stood up there like, oh, this is a big political thing with all the little people around you that were running. And still, and overlooked us. It's the principle of the thing. And that's what you did. You're talking about dividing people. If this is not dividing, tell me what is dividing. That's what I would like to know. And y'all want an answer about this because I am tired of it. I am tired of it. You've talked about in this town for so long that, oh, this is going on. You're dividing people. But well, who's dividing people more than you, Councilman B? Heartfelt from all of the conversations I've had with homeowners. I know it's really everybody's tired. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you for passing this resolution. It's an important step. It even is just kind of a small one. So um, there is a lot more work to do, and we are here behind you, supporting you 100% of the way. And I do want to say to every homeowner in this room that when we fight, we win. That's right. When we fight, we win. And there, the, the homeowner that Councilman Lyons was talking about is on 9 Garwood Place. And uh, she's a union member with the local that I work closely with. And we fought, we delivered petitions in cities, 13 different cities all over the country. And we lobbied Wells Fargo. And, and uh, elected officials wrote letters on her behalf. Her union was lobbying on her behalf. She had a sheriff's bail scheduled for today. For today. And that was just a couple of months ago that she got that notice. And now she's accepted an offer that's going to keep her and her mom's safe in her home. So we fight and it's all about fighting these banks, right? Because That's you right. know that That's anybody right. who's working with me knows that. That's all I care about. And and so if you are in your own fight and if you know people and if you are struggling to get a better deal on your mortgage, we can we can work with you at Communities United. We're a nonprofit, we have we have uh, you know no interest in this except economic and social justice. And so please come see me. We definitely have a way that we can work to, to help make these banks come to the table. And this eminent domain resolution is going to send a really strong message that we don't play. That's right.
evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Yaron Andrews, and I am a member of the Jersey Community United, and I live in Newark. I'm a homeowner underwater. Now, Newark usually be the first one up top. Now, I have to go back to my councilman, my soon-to-be elect, Ross Parasa, and fight this thing with eminent domain. We're working on it too, but being that y'all took that step, First, and we like cousins, because y'all know who we heard to. We together, we family. Collectively, together, we can do this thing. Mm -hmm. right. Wall Street, we bailed them out, so now it's time to bail our people out. That's right. I love yeah. you. Yeah. So when we talk about politics, it is political. There's no way you're going to stand up here and say that some of this is not involved with politics. You know, I'm a direct person. I believe in looking at people, looking in your eyes, when we're talking to you, not outside the wall, make eyes. Because I watch some of y'all sitting up here. That sends a message to people that you're really not paying attention. It may not be you today. It could be your daughter. It could be a family member. It could be any of us. We don't know how our future will hold. Just like some of us had one or two jobs, the economy. And everything go bust. And like we said, if it's no city, it's no jobs for you either. So all I'm saying to y'all, I appreciate what you did. Like I said, on tomorrow, I will be downtown. I already know text rise. Let me know. We got work to do. Mm. We got competition. I remember as a little girl in Irvington. Irvington was beautiful. Yes. Now, when you ride through Irvington, I cry. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm a homeowner. I'm young. I got my house young. But if, when you ride through Irvington, Irvington, you couldn't even walk through Irvington with sneakers. But today, anything and everything goes to Irvington. Mm -hmm. It is a blessing, and I want to thank you. I am a product of the domain. If you research the history of public housing and the, race, and the reservations that our Native American Indians live on, that was through the early process of eminent domain that they were housed, and that I was housed from the time I was born to I was five, and from 19 years old to the age I am now. Thank you so much. Good evening again. My name is Steve Ruiz. I would like to thank everyone who has voted on the resolution for a long time because the first, this is the first step. We have a lot of work to do, but the first step is the longest step. And I thank those who vote yes, and I would like also to thank the one who vote no also. They would know, I don't think, because they don't like Evan Tono, but they have some difference. Maybe they need to have more information. Maybe, maybe they do, maybe they don't. And since it's the first step, I know we're going to have to work together next month, the month of after, to get to the apartment plan where everybody would be in their house. You know, nobody has to, to be kicked out of their house. And their kids don't have to be according mm -hmm. to what they do. What they, they call us to do the best in the court. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So now, that's what I have to say. Thanks again. And it's a pleasure. Today, I think everything make history tonight by voting that resolution. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I say thanks to everybody. I just want to express my heartfelt gratitude for the council. You've just taken a very bold step and you've uh, put the needs of the community first. And I do applaud each and every one of you for that. You know, it's not really uh, uh, popular to take bold step, but to what you did. But it shouldn't stop here. You said that you're going to continue your investigation. And when you do, uh, when you find instances where the banks have violated the law, take equally bold steps. Mm -hmm. When you find instances, and you will find many, many, many instances where the banks have defrauded people, have violated the basic fundamentals of the contract. Okay? 
When you find those, take bold steps on behalf of not just that individual, but on behalf of the violation of the contract in your municipality. Mm. By violating the residents here, they're violating you as a law governing body, and you need mm -hmm. to take those bold steps. Go beyond any settlement that, that the federal government has to have with the banks. Mm -hmm. They've made trillions of dollars, right. trillions of dollars, when you find instances where they have been compensated through the TARP program, and yet they still want to acquire people's homes and put families out on the street. Be leaders as you have been here tonight and take those bold steps to stop the banks from abusing more American families. Thank you. wanted to say thank you for, uh, for agreeing on the eminent domain, and I have to agree with the gentleman that just finished uh, speaking. Um, we've been fighting with our bank uh, since uh, 2008, and uh, thank God we're still in our property because it's good fighters. We haven't given up either. Um, you hear a lot of uh, nightmare stories about, oh, just leave, walk. Um, you can't do this or that and the other because of the foreclosure proceeding that began. That's uh, a myth. Because if you read, which is very fundamental, you will learn a lot about the laws and the do's and the don'ts of what you can do to survive and stay in your property. It, 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 it's very uh, heart-wrenching that what you have to be put through. And like the gentleman to just spoke, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name, but, um, you do have to go on further investigation because our mortgage is not with Bank of America or Wells Fargo or Chase. We had a mortgage with a, a company. We first started out with GMAC, GMAC. Then they assigned the mortgage. So I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but once they assign the mortgage, okay, then it's assigned again. So we had a company by the name of American Home Mortgage. Now American Home Mortgage has assigned it to Homeward. Okay, supposedly homework is quote unquote going to work with us to get into uh, a program, but they're still not talking about um, lowering the market value to where the property, what the property is worth now. Mm -hmm. We were paying for a mortgage three hundred twenty thousand dollars. We have a three-family home. Okay, now our property is, is valued at one hundred eighty-seven five, mm -hmm. and it's probably lower now. So I really appreciate you giving us some thought, but you got to dig deep because that's what I, that's what we've been doing, and we've been in a fight like I feel for our life because what happens is it's a domino effect. Yes. If we lose that home, we have tanks. Where did the, where do we all go? That's right. So mm -hmm. I thank you, and if you need to call, if you need Forty Ave Street, first floor, if you need any more information. I'm, months ago, uh, former President Jimmy Carter spoke with German news magazine, Der Spiegel, and uh, Carter said something which is really unprecedented for anybody who ever held the office of President of the United States. He said, there is no functioning democracy in the United States at this time. So that is what's so striking about what has happened tonight. You know, we've seen some functioning democracy in the United States. That's very hard to find. Yeah. And very pleasant. You know, uh, you know, the NSA, I'm sure he's listening in over his microphone. But, you know, um, so, uh, you know, what we've been conducting tonight is not only uh, a struggle for economic justice for distressed homeowners, it's also a fight for democracy very directly. And I think, uh, you know, an example has been set this evening. And, uh, you know, I uh, commend the council. And, uh, you know, I urge the council to continue 
in this statesmanlike stance past the upcoming municipal elections. Uh, you know, that's when the test is really going to be coming in there. And, uh, you know, keep up the good work. Thank you all for passing the resolution. And again, I'm going to invite the council to hold the Save Our Homes meeting if you want to educate yourselves on this process at the Urban Public Library at 7 p.m. every Monday. And what you pay is in the middle of the city. 
I just make it up, but I did what I thought was best. Now, if it works, I'm going to be wrong. I don't want to be right, I want to be wrong, but I did what I felt that was necessary because many times we move on the emotion and hearsay. And our people suffer from the life of knowledge. So that was my reason saying what I say, and that is a part of the council job is to investigate. And I thought I just put it out there, you don't have to accept it. I'm not telling you not to accept it, I'm not telling you to be against it. It's just something that I feel as a citizen and as an elected person to do. And then I, I will air my dirty laundry with Mr. Shaw because we have guests tonight. But if he comes up here again and chastises me and point at me and criticize me, we're going to have a chastise you. I did not chastise you, man. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.